So not long before this interview, I actually sat down with Dr. Martin Koldorf. We talked about this, some of these funding uh, sort of con confluence between the distribution of the funding and promotion and, and so forth in the academy and, uh, and in the agencies. But one thing we didn't talk about is the influence of tech and big pharma and so forth. So how does, how does that fit into this picture? Well, again, it's sort of a tangled web uh, that I was extremely naive about when I started, which was uh, shocking to me. Shocking, for instance, in a very subtle way that I heard the people on the task force refer to the uh, TV talking head types by their first names, uh, indicating they were friends. They had established a relationship with these people, and they used them to uh, make sure that the narrative was what they wanted. And, uh, you know, I mean, the fact was that uh, the emails from Dr. Collins that were retrieved under a Freedom of Information Act request showed that they, they Francis Collins and Anthony Fauci, were uh, colluding with the uh, lay, lay media, not science, uh, to destroy or undermine or smear people who disagree with them. We saw it in the scientific journals as well, by the way. This was very uh, new to me, I think unprecedented uh, in modern history, that we had virologists uh, write a letter to the editor of, of uh, Lancet in February 2020 uh, that said that it was a conspiracy theory if anyone even thought that there was a possibility that the virus leaked out of a lab rather than was simply natural. Now, they said it was known, uh, and of course it wasn't known in February 2020. It's still not 100% known today, but I don't think anyone would say, oh, it's definitely natural. Uh, and that, why was that written is the, is the point here. That letter could only have been written to intimidate and stop anyone else from making that statement. And uh, this is very dangerous. The journals were publishing character smears on top of that sort of thing. This kind of opinion uh, piece that does not have a real scientific basis and in fact was contrary to the evidence uh, is a, a real abuse of what were very prestigious and influential journals. They're still influential, but we saw a, a garbage really produced in these journals talking about Lancet, New England Journal, Journal of the AMA, some of the world's best journals, uh, a British uh, medical journal, including simple character smears. And this, this cannot go on. And, and part of this is, again, relates to this sort of a cabal of people in powerful positions in the journal editorships who also review the NIH grants. There's this a very, very close and, like I say, unhealthy relationship in addition, all of the reviews, by the way, are done anonymously, the peer review process. And so the peer review process, uh, although it, it might seem to be something that ensures honesty because you don't have to reveal who you were and you could be honest, it's actually quite the opposite, it turns out, uh, because it, it means that people can, uh, without any accountability, stop a paper from being published. And that's what happened. I got letters from over 100 scientists during the year 2020 saying, first of all, please keep going. We're afraid to step forward, but you're right, everything you're saying. But the second thing that many of them said was they can't get their research published. These were very important papers that eventually got published, many of them, not all of them, including papers that showed that the original statistical models were grossly inaccurate that group uh, use of masks was not significantly effective on stopping or preventing the spread of the infection. These papers eventually, some of them were published, but it took many, many months. So it became a politicized atmosphere even in journals. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation, and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, Join us on Epoch TV. You can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash free trial on. 
That's ept.ms slash free trial J-A-N. It's this area around industry. How does the industry fit in? Well, the industry fits in uh, in, in many ways. I mean, in, and I have to say that, you know, we have a fantastic, uh, the most innovative industry private sector for uh, medical devices as well as f uh, pharmacologic uh, development and diagnostics in the world. I mean, there's no question about that. Our drug development is, is excels compared to anywhere in the world. Our medical device production excels. Uh, we dominate patents, we dominate new products, we dominate early access to approved drugs, particularly for cancer. We can go on about that. So it's not like uh, we don't have a, a fantastic private sector here. That's not the point. But the point is that we have to be careful uh, in, in uh, hiding or in not being transparent about things that are supported by pharma. Because basically, uh, no matter how good of a person you are, uh, if your company's making billions or do of dollars from a product, uh, is it a surprise that one of the companies that makes vaccines for COVID, is it a surprise that the CEO gets out there the other day and says, oh, we need a fourth booster, we need a fourth dose? Well, it's not a surprise because the company's mission is to make money. I'm not saying that's the reason he said it, but it's very difficult to separate that out. Now, when a pharma CEO says it, the public should understand this. But when we have people advising the president, like we saw, when we have people going on TV, writing pieces in the Wall Street Journal and other influential papers about how we must lock down until we have a vaccine, and then it turns out that person is on the board of one of the main companies making the vaccines. This is a, uh, is a problem. Uh, I'm not saying that these people are necessarily corrupt, but that influence is corrupting. And that is a conflict of interest that in some cases should make you recuse yourself. We don't even know the depths of pharma's uh, funding or not funding of certain things. We know that in this emergency situation, uh, the previous administration relieved the pharma companies of liability. That was in the part of the interest of getting things done quickly and without hesitation. And I think that was very well intentioned. But what we have now uh, is a lack of transparency on the side effects of the vaccines. We have an overt lack of transparency of the data. And when you have that coupled with a zero liability against these companies, that's, that's a problem. Uh, you have basically undermined the trust in the vaccines unnecessarily uh, because the vaccines have so far, good data on protecting people from dying who have a high risk of dying. But when you have a lack of transparency, when you have an unhealthy situation of financial gain from pushing more and more and more boosters, uh, when you have advisors, both inside the administration as well as people who were in the administration and had the ear of the president, when you have people going on TV as experts and they're not very clear on emphasizing that they are on the advisory board of the drug company making the vaccine. I think that's wrong. I think many people would say it's unethical. And the solution for that is not just admitting it or stating it clearly. The solution is recusing yourself because there is intentional or not, okay, a problem uh, with a conflict of interest there. And the American people generally believe what they hear. I mean, this everyone uh, has until this pandemic, uh, and I think that era is really has to be over. We all trust people with credentials, but the credentials alone are not sufficient anymore. In fact, we know now that many people with credentials are not to be trusted. <laughs>